pirate games used to be awesome. But they're not anymore. Oh my god, shut up. There's a loading screen for cannon? Can't even run properly, you stupid. Kill them all! There's nobody here. Oh, they added monkeys. It seems so simple. I just get a boat, put it in water, drink lots and lots and lots of alcohol. Soju plus orange juice, thank me later. And boom, you've got a pirate game. So where are they? Why do the few that actually release fail miserably? And why do these old ones still hold up so well? Sid Meier's Pirates may not have the prettiest graphics. I happen to think they're fine. And at a glance, it seems like every town is the exact same. Ignore the mayor, get ripped off by the merchant, repair your boats with the shipwright, try talking to woman at the tavern, get scared and avoid talking to woman at the tavern, drink your insecurities away at the tavern. But wait, the shipwright at this pirate haven can upgrade my boat to fire grape shot, but only this Dutch guy can improve my sails. Do you smell that, boys and girls? I haven't showered in days, but beyond that, it's the smell of adventure, baby. Every tavern whispers its own unique secrets, and to get the most upgrades, gold, and story, you gotta gather info and take note of all the different rumors across the entire ocean. I wanted to be a pirate so bad when I was a kid, and I achieved my dream. I ain't never paying for win, Raya suckers, woo! But pirates, this game gave me that adventure I was missing. Visually, the towns might not be very distinct, but every single town is unique in the only way that actually matters, the way that affects your gameplay. My ability to effectively fight other ships was a direct result of how how well I explored and kept track of the different towns, the factions, their relationships to one another, and most importantly, how to exploit them. Each town is not just some box to check off on your list of places to go. Now, nah. within the first two hours, I started keeping track of trade routes, taking note of which ships carried the most loot. I started to manipulate my relationships with the different countries to increase my earnings. I wanted to take some of these Dutch ships down, because the king looks funny, but if I do that, they'll put a bounty on my head and I won't be able to take advantage of the high spice price in Curacao. What? The Spanish and the French are at war? Huh. Yeah, sure, bro. I'll escort the new Spanish governor. No problem. No problem. And collect promotion, collect money, marry the French governor's daughter, I am an evil genius. Tell me that is not exactly how a pirate would look at towns. As nothing but tools to be used for getting what they want. The gameplay tricked me. It tricked me into thinking and playing like a pirate. It's so awesome, you guys have to play it. Again, the graphics may not show that you're visiting unique locations, but the sense of exploration and discovery was very real. Ubisoft, you, you might know them as the guys who make nothing good ever, looked at that exploration and spat on it. Pissed on it, even. Uh, Ubisoft? Oh, you must be talking about me, Skull and Bones. The best pirate game of all time. The world's first quadruple A game. A game so good, it's worth $70, maybe even 80 for the complete edition. It's the most complete and realized facilitation of- Anyways, Black Flag has been the definitive go-to single-player pirate game for a decade now. I'm half mashed just thinking about those fort raids. Mm. And for the first couple hours after replaying it, after I got my boat the experience was untouchable. I would fight ships, dig up treasure, climb cool ass towers, and then fight fight more ships and dig up treasure and climb climb cool ass towers. And get this, I would hop back on my boat to fight more ships and dig up more treasure. Hey, wait a minute. Listen, all right. Every single island in Black Flag is visually distinct and appealing, but functions 100% identically. In terms of gameplay, none of these locations are unique, and it's filled with the same four side quests copy pasted more times than my goddamn bird PNG in these videos. They're even all marked on the map. How am I supposed to get excited to sail around the Caribbean as a brave pirate adventurer. If before I even get on my boat, I already know exactly what I'll find and where I'll find it down to the fucking millimeter. I've had trips to King Supers with more exploration than that. Or Publix. Whatever. Food store. And another thing. Oh. Oh. Oh, that sound. Oh. Yellow. On a scale of like 1 to 10, how down are you? to like quit our jobs and go to the Caribbean and sing like sea shanties on a boat for the rest of our lives. Um, He's totally in. We are totally going to the Caribbean. But what about all the unskippable cutscenes? Yeah, what about them? Roll boys, roll boys, roll. Trailing missions, ass creeds, droning chimpanzee brain, logic bastardizing fuck ass story. You know what I have to say to all of that? Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Believe her, Johnny, leave her. I can't even be bothered to complain about them because the vibes. That is the one thing you cannot take away from Black Flag. Sailing the jackdaw on a foggy night, listening to the waves crash against the bow of your boat, the grimy thrown together buildings, like when Edward kills a guy in this game, he sends him to Satan's BDSM dungeon. Like, oh my god, you know, the animations might be a little bit dated, but they are nonetheless brutal and ruthless and sickening. Bones crunch and blood squelches as Edward minces those European people into bite-sized chicken nuggets. This is how I expect the pirate to fight. Sorry, one sec. Windy weather, boys, stormy weather, boys, when the wind blows, we're all together, boys. 
This one time I was fighting a guy and the second I started losing the sword battle, I said, man, screw this guy. And I shot him in the head. <gasps> It's the Pirates of the Caribbean thing! Oh my god! Black Flag is not a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination, but it nailed that pirate brutality and ruthlessness better than any game out there, and that is why it's still remembered so fondly today. Sea of Thieves came in a few years later, and although they removed the violence and boobies, they preserved that essential rough around the edges, ragtag crew kind of vibe perfectly. Plus, there's liquor! My sweet yeah, nectar! Oh my god, god. So so delicious. Delicious. Now, if only I wasn't such a terrible cook, I could actually make something to go with it! Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Factor 75, the sponsor of this video and the solution to cooking incompetence. Oh, sh- Factor 75 is the convenient way to eat these days, boys. There's no planning, minimal prepping, and no mess. I am the only dumbass American where I live, so I get many, many weird stares from my roommates when I make food, but with this, I can save myself the guesswork and just get to eating. With over 34 meal options and 36 side options like smoothies and desserts every week, you're never gonna get bored or run out of meals to try. Uh, help, help, oh my god. Meals arrive pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes or less. And if you do the math, I'm pretty sure that's faster than ordering out. Factor is perfect for getting consistent, nutritious meals at the drop of a hat so you can get back to more important matters like gaming. Grab a quick chef-prepared meal in just two minutes or less with zero mess and zero cleanup. I am never cooking again. Get 50% off your first Factor Box and free wellness shots for life using my link. That means you get to choose two free wellness shots from the three available flavors for every order while you are an active subscriber. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Now back to Sea of Thieves. Guys, look at this treasure map I found. Finding treasure is actually fun in this game because of your dumbass teammates with you. No. <laughs> 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 There's this genuine giddiness walking around these islands, getting closer and closer to the treasure, and the compass starts going crazy. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Oh! Hey, I can't breathe down here, idiot. Ah, shit. But most importantly, there's PvP. Black Flag had some sick combat, okay? They perfectly balanced that calm, chill maxing commute with instigating global warming and bleaching the ocean red for generations to come. The rhythm of every fight is intoxicating as you ricochet back and forth between guns, creating a damn symphony of carnage. I also find provolone to be intoxicating. There's always another gun to shoot or turn to be made while waiting for the other ones to reload. And that's not even the part you look forward to the most. Now that's the... <gasps> Wait, you can get up here? <laughs> My issue is that there is very, very little strategy required to beat this game. Every single fight comes down to shooting your weapons the second they come off cooldown and having upgrades. And that's not a bad thing. It's actually really fun. Hell, that's what gives it the rhythm I was talking about. It just... sometimes gets a little repetitive. Pirates, on the other hand, was limited by the technology of 1987, Jesus Christ, and the combat was more about strategizing than mechanical skill. Gotta balance the different types of ammo while minimizing damage to the cargo. Maybe I want to steal the boat and the crew so I don't want to hurt it at all. You had to predict the other ship's movement to avoid their broadside, dodge cannibals, stay within range, retreat sometimes, all to try to sneak in for that sweet, sweet boarding attack. Not a coincidence that this is the best part of every pirate game, I'm just saying. Starting an attack from the wrong angle or with the wrong ship equipped can and will result in your defeat. However, it looks really lame. Versus again, the combat in Black Flag, which is really, really fun and satisfying at the expense of literally any semblance of difficulty. Uh, if it's difficulty you want, then look no further, folks. Back in the cage, Skull and Bones, get back in there. Okay, I'll go. Sea of Thieves came along and made things simple. Simple. Simple? Simple? I have been playing Sea of Thieves on and off since the day it released, and I've got the drip to prove it. They've made a lot of improvements, but exploration still does not hit right. There is no reason to go anywhere until the game puts a giant beacon or arrow on the map for you. No one in the world has ever booted up Sea of Thieves and said, oh, <laughs> yeah, let's let's go explore Old Salt's Atoll for, for fun. I'm just saying. You know, what if they each had their own unique NPC? They, like, shared a riddle which led to some treasure on the island, huh? You know, maybe if I explored, I'd find some sails or a hat unique to that island. Instead, they're empty and boring. They're boring and empty. How many sunken ships are there in this game? And you unlock the Ashen Dragon ship set by selling books? Are you insane? But that's not what I want to talk about with Sea of Thieves. Oh, we're being invaded, we're being invaded. Here's where we all naively thought the skill ceiling for the PvP was when the game first came out, and here's where it actually is. Oh my god. It's like they combined the mechanical skill needed in Black Flag with the strategy required in Pirates. Hitting shots is fucked. Just trying to eyeball it will almost never work and often leads to feelings of intense rage, self-loathing, and hatred for minorities, or so I'm told. You could fill out a college thesis on geometry and inertia just by firing jig balls all day, except there's no time because you're also managing six types of ammo, dodging shots, sniping enemies, drinking dangerous amounts of alcohol, and if you mess it up, your ship will sink because cannoneer is the most important role. Hell monkeys can suck it, am I right, boys? Yeah, no angle? No angle? 
turn us, bro. Oh, yeah, cannoning means nothing if the helm is jerking his YouTube plushie in the corner instead of focusing on getting an angle and avoiding broadsides. And if they mess that up, the ship sinks because helm is the most important role. And don't let those cannon goons tell you otherwise. Yeah, all that's well and good, Mr. J, but uh, d d does it have boarding? Yes, perfect, perfect. I have peaked as a gamer. What's up, bro? Border is the most important role, and I need you guys to spread this information like a wildfire so I can continue to justify leaving my ship every three seconds to fulfill the one thing that makes me happy in this universe. No matter what you're doing at any one given time, it feels like you're the most important player. How many other multiplayer games can say that? Like, well, like three? The combat looks deceptively simple, and when you first start out, it can feel like the other players are hacking with how effortlessly they sink your ship. I mean, I mean, look at this. What, what, how do you curve cannonballs? Death spiral and anti-death spiral? Talking. Oh my god. This is a good game. But with every cannonball hit, every successful boarding attempt, and every screaming 10 year old you steal a treasure chest from, another layer is peeled back, and slowly, very slowly, it all starts to come together. This monkey. Black Flag and Pirates had you doing several different things in a specific order. Sea of Thieves is complex because it asks you to do all those things at the same time. And with the recent addition of matchmaking, warping the missions, and server hopping, the probability that every other ship in my lobby both has loot and wants to fight is like significantly higher than I remember. You don't have to sacrifice three days of your time in a goat procession anymore. Like they stripped away all the pointless waiting and running around like a zombie. And it's just, it's just fun now. Just do me a favor, read this right, right here before playing. All right, come on guys. That was a fun battle, right? Shut up, dad. I wasn't talking to you, goddammit. Shut the fuck up. Stop talking to me. You guys know that getting mad makes it funnier for the thieves, right? What are you doing? Later, bitch. Later, bitch. <laughs> the fun part of Sea of Thieves is searching, discovering, and protecting your loot. Not pressing F a bunch of times and watching a number go up. When your fake imaginary pirate gold that doesn't buy anything useful gets stolen in a game called Sea of Thieves, don't get mad. You are embarrassing yourself. But if you're one of those people who sinks new players at outposts, you are the devil, screw you. See if these is awesome and there is legitimately nothing else this satisfying on the market. Hey, you know, I'm actually pretty satisfying no, my- shut up, Skull and Bones! <laughs> ah, ah, jeez, man, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just that, it's just that, you know, you're, you're a disappointment and an embarrassment. And everyone's gonna forget about you in a month when Sea of Thieves releases on PS5. Uh, so, so, so yeah, just, um, you know, just actually just, just keep crying over there. See if I care. So what's the deal? All you need is diverse and meaningful exploration, the right aesthetic and vibes, and engaging in complex combat, and boom, great pirate game. If these three games did it, why won't anyone else? What changed? I pondered long and hard on this question, spent countless nights theorizing, racking my brain and crafting reasons as to why this may be the case, all the while absolutely guzzling my strawberry soju. God, it's so delicious. Until I realized. What if it's not these three games did it good, but no one else will? Maybe it's these three games did it good, so no one else will. Think about it. If a video game developer wants to come along and have a commercially and critically successful pirate game, they need to have better sea shanties, boarding, and vibes than Black Flag, better sailing mechanics and multiplayer than Sea of Thieves, better exploration and progression than pirates, and better combat than all of them. That shit? is nigh impossible. And developers know this. Like, you're not beating them at their own game, and it'd be a waste of money to even try. We already have the best story pirate games, the best strategy pirate game, the best single player pirate game, and the best PvP pirate game. Anything less than a AAA game has basically no chance of dethroning any of them. What about a quadruple-A game, huh? God, shut up, Skull and Bones! The only way you're a quadruple-A game is if every A stands for one singular brain cell in your head. Play nice, play fair, and play safe. A good pirate never takes another person's property. Do you even know what a pirate is? Like, did you, did you ever even look it up? Do you ever what the first thing you do in Black Flag is? Huh? You murder a man in cold blood, steal his clothes, money, and identity before ruthlessly slaughtering some Spanish sailors, and not one hour later, I am leading a prison break across the fleet of- Oh! What is going on? Come on, you bastards! Ah, sorry guys, sorry, that's not safe enough for Skull and Bones. You know, we better turn those waves like all the way down to save all the water spouts, the rain, the sh sh shooting people? Stabbing them? Nah, 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 we can't have that. No, not in our pirate game. Let's just remove non-ship combat altogether. Like no exploration of the islands either. You know, someone might stub their toe. The entire pirate life fantasy is completely non-existent. People are drawn to anti-heroes like Jack Sparrow and 
basically every other character in Pirates of the Caribbean because it's liberating to watch them break the mold, be slimy and, and, and weird, and still be heroic. They represent true, unobstructed freedom. And the pirate game genre is in a unique and perfect position to let people play as the anti-hero. Skull and Bones threw it all out the fucking window. Sure, we can be pirates, but you know, you know, first we gotta get our way out of this shipwreck. Okay, then what? Make a contract with the officer? Okay, whatever. Fetch quest for his loot? Okay. Greet the pirate lord? Okay. Harvest acacia wood? Make peace with the sea people? Okay. This is the only type of mission. Combat has lost all of its flow and pizzazz. The cannons feel like pea shooters. Switching weapons is nauseating. Turning the ship is an unresponsive sleep paralysis nightmare, 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 nightmare. Why does my ship have stamina, Ubisoft? Do you have any real humans working there or are you all just monkeys? Embrace yourself for this one, okay? Oh, they removed boarding. <laughs> if you made an exact list of everything I loved and everything I hated in Black Flag, you would have an exact word for word list of everything they removed and everything they kept in Skull and Bones. It looks just like a pirate game. But make no mistake, my friends, it gives you all the freedom of a minimum wage pizza delivery driver drowning in student loans, working nights to barely afford his rent. Please, Mr. Skurlock, can I please have a raise? They spent the past decade making a game that feels like it came out five years before the original. And, and, and all of this, all of this from the start, the reason you were made, Skull and Bones, was for the purpose of adding multiplayer and PvP into Black Flag. And you want to know how that went, folks? You cannot attack other ships in this game. PvP is limited to select missions and world events. They spent 10 years making a PvP game with no PvP. <sighs> you want to know my favorite quote from Pirates of the Caribbean? That's what a ship is, you know. It's not just a keel and a hull and a deck and a sail. That's what a ship needs. But what a ship is, what the Black Pearl really is, is freedom. You can have boats and cutlasses and cannons and sea shanties, but if you can't nail this one crucial aspect, you are not a pirate game. The ability to trick people, kill them, steal, make alliances when I see fit and betray them when it benefits me. Freedom, this is present in every single good pirate game and is starkly absent from all of the posers. None of that actually matters though, because you can't get drunk. So it's F tier anyways. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join the Discord. I have one of those. What are you guys doing? Thank you to Blue Jay for voicing some lines for me. Thank you $20 patrons, Zussie and Ruxaro. I'm redoing the Patreon soon. Your support means the world to me. Thank you. And thank you Factor75 for sponsoring the video. See ya.